So hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we are going to do three AITS problems from, from thermodynamics. So let's begin with the first question. So a cylinder whose volume is 20 liters is made by adiabatic walls and it contains two moles of helium gas and it is divided into two parts by a thin fixed rigid membrane. So this membrane over here is fixed. The volume of the right part is two times the volume of the left part. So the volume here is two V naught and this is V naught, okay? and an electric heater of constant power installed in the left part is switched on. Heat transfer rate through the membrane is H, which is 0.3 watts per one degree centigrade temperature difference across the membrane. And initially the heater was switched off and both the parts were in thermal as well as mechanical equilibrium. The membrane can withstand a maximum pressure difference of delta P equals 1000 pascals. Then we have to choose the correct option. Initially it is given to be in thermal equilibrium. The initial temperature is T naught on both sides and it is also given to be in mechanical equilibrium which means the initial pressure on both sides is also the same. Okay, so and uh, this is the initial situation and now the heater is turned on. What will happen is the temperature and pressure on the left chamber is going to increase. As a result of the temperature increasing, there will be heat transfer into the right section and whose magnitude we can easily write. So uh, let's say that heat transfer and by the way guys, it's heat transfer rate that is given to us. So I am going to write it as Q dot meaning dq by dt. So Q dot, we can in one step write it as H multiplied by delta T, where delta T is the temperature difference between the section on the left and the section on the right. Okay, so it's given to us that delta P has to be, has to be less than a thousand pascals for the membrane to still be intact, right? So we can get a feel that the pressure on the left chamber is going to be greater because its volume is smaller, right? So the gas molecules are close by, so they have colliding with each other much more frequently. So let's try to figure out P1 minus P2. So let's say the pressure on the left chamber is PL and the pressure on the right chamber is PR. So the difference of these two has to be less than or equal to a thousand pascals. So now the pressure on the left chamber, I can write using the ideal gas equation, NRT by V. Okay guys, now uh, how to find out the moles? So initially we know P, V and T as uh, pressure and temperatures are same on both of the section. The volume on the right is double the volume on the left, which means the moles on the right is double the moles on the left. On the right side, it should be two thirds of the total number of moles, which is going to be four by three moles. And on the left chamber, it should be simply two by three moles. And two by three plus four by three equals two moles. Okay, so the pressure on the left is the number of moles on the left, TL, which is the temperature at any general time, divided by the volume. And the volume, we took it as V0. Minus the pressure on the right is four by three R, TR, divided by two V0. And this should be less than or equal to a thousand pascals. Okay guys, so now if you take uh, two R by three to the other side and you know, perform the calculations, V0 is given to us, so uh, the total volume is 20, so V0 plus 2 V0 is 20, so the value of V0 is 20 by 3, and liters we have to convert it into meter cube, and after doing that, you'll find that the max possible temperature difference between the two sections is actually 1.2 degrees Celsius. Okay guys, so now let's say the power of the electric heater is P, and the heat transfer rate into the second container, right section, is Q dot. So now let's apply first law of thermodynamics on this boundary layer over here. So now the thing is we can consider the power dissipated from the filament as heat transfer into the system. So heat transfer coming in is nothing but the power of the filament, the heater multiplied by the time, right? Because it's constant power minus, now the heat leaving the system is Q dot, right? Now guys, Q dot isn't really constant. So we have to write, you know, the heat leaving the system as integral of Q dot dt okay now the reason for writing this again is because q dot is not constant it is change is changing as the temperature difference changes okay this would be equal to the change in inter internal energy of the left gas which is going to be n r delta t and final temperature is tl initial temperature is t naught so and obviously the limits of time is from 0 to t so now let's apply first law for the right boundary layer L right boundary layer the only heat transfer coming in is q dot so this is going to be q dot dt from 0 to t and this would be equal to the change in internal energy of the gas on the right which is n tr minus t naught so now what i'm going to do is divide both sides by i can subtract this so that i can subtract these two and cancel out the t naughts so this just becomes pt minus 3 by 2 integral q dot dt from 0 to t and on the right side it just becomes 2r by 3 okay so this is the final equation that we are getting so we can also write this as 
delta t so basically again guys q dot is going to increase with time why because the temperature difference delta t which is tl minus tr is going to increase with time so what's going to happen is this term over here this will increase with time and after some point when these two terms okay so and when steady state will be achieved so the rhs is going to be constant which means the lhs should also be a constant so now if the lhs is a constant so if i name this as some function y so then dy by dt has to be zero right because the left side is a constant so which basically means p minus 3 by 2 now guys the way you differentiate this thing is you differentiate the upper limit uh, which comes out to be 1 and then you just put q dot over here right and the lower limits derivative will give you the 0 as answer so this has to be equal to 0 so which essentially means the power has to be 3 by 2 q dot and uh, this just comes out to be 3 by 2 multiplied by q now q dot was equal to h delta t right so h is 0 0.3 delta t in the steady state was 1.2 and this would be equal to 0 0.54 watts when steady state is achieved q dot becomes constant right because q dot is essentially h delta t so in steady state we know delta t will become constant so q dot essentially is a constant so you can take this out of the integral so this just becomes q dot into t okay so now for delta t to remain constant we want to ensure that the derivative of this expression is zero so p has to be equal to 3 by 2 q dot so now the answer is going to be option b and option d in this question the molar heat capacity of an ideal gas is given okay it's and it's given to vary with temperature then we have to talk about the e equation of the process so guys uh, the molar heat capacity of the gas is is nothing but the heat dq that we have to give to the system as it is molar it is a heat per mole to increase the temperature of the system by an amount of dt so it is again the heat that we need to give in order to raise the temperature of one mole of a gas by an amount of dt so from here we can get dq as so now we can simply use first law because uh, we uh, with first law we can relate c to cv right so if i write down first law of thermodynamics it will be dq equals du plus dw and uh, dq i can write it as nc dt and du is nothing but ncv dt so this is the reason for writing this because we can see that c minus cv is coming from both of these and dw is nothing but gas pressure multiplied by dv so the process equation they want it in terms of volume and temperature so so let's get rid of the pressure for that we can use ideal gas equation that is pv equals nrt so p gas i can write it as nrt by v so now the n gets cancelled out and guys c minus cv I can get it from here so c minus cv comes out to be alpha t squared so now we can solve this indefinite integral so this is going to be alpha t square by 2 on the left side and on the right side it's going to be r ln v i'm gonna and instead of writing plus c i'm gonna, just gonna do ln v by v naught uh, what we obtain is v equals v naught e to the power alpha t square divided by 2r and the process equation just becomes v e to the power minus alpha t square divided by 2r equal to a constant which corresponds to option b okay guys so now moving on to the last question so we have a mole of diatomic gas that is made to undergo a quasi static cyclic thermodynamic process okay so during the process from a to b the temperature is varying as kv square which means it's a parabola during the whole cycle the maximum pressure of the gas is two times of the minimum pressure now if the gas absorbs 0.36 kilojoules of heat during the process from a to b so let's write that down so, so the heat absorbed in the process a b is going to be 0 0.36 kilojoules and the question is how much heat does the gas liberate during the process b to c so q so we have to figure out q b c and it's all it was also and it's also given that p max is equal to half of p min okay guys so now uh, as we have to determine the work work done and stuff it'll be beneficial if we actually draw a pv diagram let's try to plot that so let's start with point a so the volume here let's say it is va a to b the process is given to be t equals kv square so we know that pv is equal to nrt if you observe if t is proportional to v square one v cancels out on both sides and we get p is proportional to v so p proportional to v is nothing but a straight line passing through the origin so p proportional to v is nothing but a straight line that passes through the origin so let's so this is going to be the process okay and this state let's just name it as bb now we can clearly see that process p process b to c is t proportional to v right because it's a straight line that passes through the origin so t equal to some constant times v is the process that goes from b to c if t is proportional to v then can v cancels out on both sides and we get pressure is constant so pressure constant meaning the process is isobaric and from c to a we can easily see the process is isochoric so it will be something like this so okay guys so now we have determined the 
PV diagram. Then I'll just mark down the points. So this is point A, this is point B, and this is point C. So let's say the pressure, volume, temperature at the point A is P, V, T. Now guys, uh, this thing over here, P max, so it was given in the problem that P max equal to half of P min. From the PV diagram, we can easily see that PB is the maximum pressure. So this would be equal to half of P minimum. Wait, it was the other way around. P min is half of P max. So the max pressure is PB. So PB by two equals PA. So if I say the pressure of A is P, then the pressure at B is going to be 2p. No, so now we know that the process curve follows p proportional to v. As p got doubled, v also gets doubled. So this is going to be 2v. t is equal to kv square, right? So as v gets doubled, t becomes 4 times. So the temperature at this point is going to be 4t. So and, uh, and for point c, we know that the pressure remains constant. So it is going to be 2p. va is going to be half, right? So the volume at this point is v, same as va. So the process bc is nothing but p constant, which means v is directly proportional to temperature. Now as v got halved, temperature also gets halved, which means the temperature over here is 2t. So now we are going to apply first law of thermodynamics for the cyclic process. So basically it says that q equals del u plus w. Now guys, delta u is a state function, meaning it depends on the point that we are at. So if I start from a, after my journey, I come back to a, so delta u would simply be zero in that case. For q and w, we cannot say that because they depend on the path that we take. Net q is going to be qab plus qbc plus qca. And similarly, the net work done, so write it as the area under this triangle because it's uh, we already have the PV diagram in our hand. But uh, the thing is, it's important to keep in mind the sign of the net work done. So if you observe something, from A to B, the process is an expansion process, which means the work done will be positive, right? Because the gas is doing some work. Because if you take a system, something like this, if the boundary layer expands, which basically means that the gas is doing some work, we take that work done as positive, according to our sign convention. A to B, the process is an expansion process, which means the work will be, corresponding work will be positive. And the corresponding work will nothing but the area under this process, right? So this is the network done from A to B. From B to C, if you observe, this is the network done. And as you can clearly see, it's the work WBC that is dominating, which is greater in magnitude. And WBC is, as you can see, it's going to be negative because it's a compression process. And AC work is going to be zero because it's an isochoric process. So as you can see, the negative work done is the one that is dominating. So the network done will be negative. And the magnitude is simply the area of this triangle and that we can easily find out. So this corresponds to 2v minus v, which is nothing but v. And this side length is nothing but 2p minus p, which is going to be p. So the area of the triangle is nothing but half base height. Now guys, p comma v is associated with the point A, right? So I can also write pv as nrt. So this I can also write it as minus nrt divided by two. Okay, so now the thing is qab is given to us as 0.36 kilojoules. QBC is what we have to find plus QCA equals minus NRT divided by 2. So we need the value of QCA. So CA is this process over here. It's an isochoric process. Let's write the first law for the process QCA. So the heat transfer is QCA. This is equal to delta U CA plus the work done. And the work done from C to A is uh, going to be zero because the gas, because it's an isochoric process. So W is simply zero. And now delta UC is, is going to be NCV TA minus TC. Now TA minus TC is going to be minus T. TA minus TC is going to be minus T. So the heat transfer from CA is going to be minus phi by two NRT. And once you substitute the value of QCA into this equation, this is the expression that you get for QBC. So as you guys can see, now we have to determine the value of T in order to get the answer. And for that, we'll use the information that is provided to us over here. QAB is given to us as 0.36 kilojoules. So AB is this process over here. So QAB, I can write it as del UAB plus WAB. And del UAB is nothing but NCV, TB minus TA and WAB. Now WAB guys, uh, we don't have to integrate the process or we can simply use area under the curve. This is a trapezium. So I can write its area as half distance between them, which is going to be 2v minus v, which is v multiplied by the sum of these two sides, which is going to be p plus 2p, which is 3p. tb minus ta is going to be 3t. And after substituting, this will come out to be 15 by 2 nrt. And this is going to be 3 by 2 pv. And pv, if you get, remember, we can write it as nrt. This is equal to 0.36. And from here, we get the value of nrt as 0.36 divided by 9, which is 0 0.04 kilojoules. Okay, so now we're going to put it over here. 0 0.04 multiplied by 2 is 0 0.08. Subtract it with that, 
minus 0.36 so it comes out to be minus 0.28 so the heat liberated by the gas in the process bz is 0.28 kilojoules so that was it for this video guys if you enjoyed the video do like share and subscribe to my channel and that's it thanks for watching